Today we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite aspects of video games, boss fights. Boss fights make video games what they are. It makes them fun, it makes them tense, it gives stakes. And I think that's the biggest one, is the stakes of what a boss fight is. It is like the wall. You know, when you play Elden Ring and you meet Margit for the first time, you're like, oh, oh, this is the boss fight for like the first area. This is, this is, this is Limgrave's real boss fight. You know, it is the wall. I'm gonna be talking about four games that is all boss fights. You know, it, it, they, they really are just all boss fights and it's why they're so fun to me, despite the price tag. I'm gonna be talking mostly about games that are like lower in, in price tag, like 25 bucks, $15, 20 bucks, because it's at this price range where my favorite thing comes out, gameplay. Gameplay to me is the biggest part of any game. If it's not fun to play, I don't wanna play it and fuck your story. That's pretty much how it goes. Which is kind of why I, I, I don't I, I I never wanted to play the the second God of War game, uh, Ragnar Ragnarok, primarily because it's all story. And how many boss fights are there per number of hours that you play? It's like no, I I want to be hit with like intense shit. I'm not trying like yes, your world looks nice, congratulations. Like you could render shit, that's cool. I want to play for the stakes, bro not for the story that i can turn on and watch interstellar on my damn tv like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm here for the fights and because of that these are the four games that i recommend anybody that enjoys boss fights to play the first one being cuphead cuphead is fucking spectacular it is 20 bucks and for 20 bucks you get around 30 levels and all of them are boss fights literally all of them are boss fights some of the most memorable are the, the the damn flower in the first aisle. Actually, I'll just go by aisle for those that don't haven't played it. Uh, fuck it, Let, let's just do it that way. Since we're doing it by aisle, we'll start with the first aisle. The flower is super fucking fun. It is the most memorable song in the Cuphead official soundtrack that is my favorite. It, it is so memorable just off the music alone and it is super fun. The second aisle, I think the fight with Hmm, this one's hard because the second aisle had a lot of good fights. I like the clown in the train. I hate the bitch that sits like on top of her cake castle. I I, I hate that fucking level so much because it, it's a bit of luck of the draw. I'll, however, it is just pure skill. It's like, are you good or are you not good? And actually, that's the whole game. But that's kind of the point, right? It isn't based on your build. I think that's why RPGs kind of annoy me just in general. I don't like having to have a certain build to fight a motherfucker. If I feel like you should just be able to fight everybody off the rip. But of course, people who like RPGs, they like that stuff. They like the grind. They like the, let me go here to collect this. Let me go here to collect that. Because me collecting these items is probably all its own story. But with these type of games like Cuphead, it is purely about you and your fucking fingers right it is you holding this controller playing as good as you can and i think that's why i gravitate to to these type of games especially this price range everything good is at this price range you have hades you have valheim you have cuphead you have fury you you have so many games that are just like between 20 to 30 dollars that are just absolute bangers you know you have risk of rain too but since we're talking about Cuphead particularly, you're getting about 30 damn boss fights. That's not including like the running gun missions either, where it's just to get coins to get more shit for, for your character. And you get a DLC that's like maybe five bucks. So really the whole package for everything the game has to offer is $25. For $25, you are getting probably what is 20 to 30 hours of content. And it's good fucking content that's super replayable. And you can, once, once you're done with the whole game, I think you can play the, the, the levels again, but like an even harder difficulty because there's, there's a regular difficulty, there's kind of like the easier difficulty, and then there's the really hard difficulty where it's like, I think every, every level gets like an extra phase and it makes it so much harder. It's just, it's beautiful. That's one of those games where I'm just like, okay. And, and there's so much variety too. It's crazy. It's like, dude, how much variety can you have in a 2D platformer? A lot. So I base all the other 2D platformers, uh, as 
co-op platformer. Okay, so it's a 2D platformer, essentially. I'm uh, there. That's the gold standard for me personally. But the next game is another, I guess, 2D game. It is Tales of Iron. Now, Tales of Iron is a bit different because it is trying to tell a story. It's trying to be both a souls like. It, it's like a light souls like and a light Metroidvania. So it, you get like baby's first souls like Metroidvania, and for what it is, it's fun. Now, this is the only game on this list where I'm like. The price is a little, little hard to justify. So if you can get it on sale, if you can get it not for 25 bucks, the 12 or 14 hours that you spend on this game is going to be totally worth it. Because you do get a lot of boss fights too. I don't think it's 30, but it, it's a good number. It's like 15 to 20, I think. You don't have to discover so much of the damn map. It's kind of my it is an introductory metroidvania game for somebody who's kind of apprehensive to oh there's a hundred plus rooms and i have to kind of discover everything to discover everything in the game it's kind of what keeps me away from hollow knight i, I i've dabbled in, like for two hours in it i'm just like dude do, do i really want to do all that and then have to come back to this room again at some point because there's always backtracking in these games i didn't have that apprehension with tales of iron because it's not such a heavy metroidvania game that's not to say that it's bad. People love Metroidvania games and more power to you. I'm just saying that this is a great introductory game with fucking fun combat. It's brutal. It is very much kind of Souls-like, you know? Sure, you don't die in two to three hits like in Elden Ring, but you do die in like four to five or six. It's like, you, you, gotta, you gotta be careful, bro. You could get staggered too and then you could get fucked up. So it's... It's definitely strategic. There's definitely pairing that you have to learn, dodges that you have to learn. There's a lot of fucking boss fights that are kind of bonuses too. It's not a part of the main story, but you can sure as hell find some motherfuckers that I don't. I don't want to spoil it because it is such a treat. When you're like, oh, that's cool as fuck. Stuff like that, super neat. And I'm happy it's in the game. And I'm happy to say that Tales of Iron is another heavy boss fight filled game that is totally worth it if you can get it on sale. If you still, if you have the dough, you know, you can still make the pizza. So, and the narrator of the game is the same guy that voices Geralt of Rivia. So that's cool too. I thought that was really neat. Clear as day, the wrath, the everything. It, it sounds like you're, you're being fucking told the story by Geralt. And the game is pretty much told in like that. That, like that cartoon book style so it's really neat uh, again neat art design neat game overall it's really cool it, it'll have you wanting to find all the collectibles it's so rare for a game to get me to do that is i'm very much i want to experience what 80 percent of people would experience i don't need it to be perfectly unique to me so yeah totally worth it the next game is kind of out of left field here but it's punch a bunch this has to be one of my favorite games of all time. Why? The combat is fucking brilliant. The physics style combat in this is so damn good because it is so intuitive. The movement is fucking cool. The ability to really add your own flair to your fight style. It is exact. It is almost exactly how you want to move. And that's why it's fantastic. You know, me, sometimes I'm like, you know what? Let me play more aggressive and I play more aggressive. Let me play less aggressive and more distance management. Pop, 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 pop. You know, like I do that. And it's so, yes, there, there are little criticisms I have at this game. I do. And I don't want to mention them all in this video in case I want to do its own dedicated video. But overall, the package, I've played 100 plus hours of a $15 game. Do you know how fucking rare that is? It's super rare, but it's it's only more complement to the game for being as good as it is. Yes, there are a lot of gimmick fights in this game that I I'm not super I'm not a super fan of because once you've done it, once you've seen it, once you know how to fight the damn gimmick fights, they're done. But there are about four to six boxers in the game that are actually really fun to continuously play because they fight like normal people they they throw combos a couple of combos and uh that that's kind of it so you you can kind of play around how they throw things sometimes they'll catch you off with something's like oh you threw that or oh you threw this 
but if I were to list them, it'd be like Blackjack, it'd be Pointy, it'd be Piston Fist, it would be Hurricane, which is probably the best fight in the game, and maybe the Puppet. Those are the five that I, I'd say these are the funnest fights in the game, and it's totally worth it. There are, there are like 16 fights in this game. They're split screen too, and it's a fucking blast. Give it a try. If you have again the dough, this is definitely a $15 game. Totally worth every dollar. Completely re replayable. There are other achievements. I almost 100% of this game. I think once you get to the last achievements, it's a bit like, yeah, I'm not doing that. But for some, for the people that like to 100% video games, again, you're getting so much game for 15 bucks. So definitely get that. So I guess number four is going to be Fury. Fury, again, is just nothing but pure boss fights. It is literally just all boss fights. Uh, every level is a boss fight, and it's not like Cuphead or or Punch a Bunch, where it's like two to four minutes, and even Punch a Bunch less time. It's like 15 seconds sometimes, <laughs> but because you can play aggro. Uh, it's more like five to ten minutes of just one continuous long battle almost like an you, you feel like a fucking anime character because it's like in stages too it's like oh you beat this version of frieza oh frieza gets this gets this upgrade it's like okay now you beat that version of frieza and you, you hit him with the spirit bomb all right what else are you gonna hit him with i'm not a dragon ball z fan i just that's always the arc i remember watching my brother watch so that's the one i talk about the most in other words it's just like, oh, it's another phase. Holy shit, I didn't see this coming. What's next? So stuff like that is really cool. And every fight feels that way. It's a damn it, it's a damn good time. It deserves its praise. I believe it's 20 bucks. For 20 bucks, again, you just really cannot go wrong with Fury. It is it is just that good. What's so unique is that it doesn't master any one thing. It's a mastery of a okay, it's not a mastery. It's just an addition of a lot of things. So it's like both a parry based game, uh, hack and slash, bullet hell, and and I guess puzzler. Because it is like some of these fights are like puzzles. And they're just a shit ton of fun. Now, I will say that they also have like some DLC as well. If you guys want to pay for that. I guess you're like a different fighter or you have a different fight style. It's more like I guess it's a it's a pros and cons so i guess you take away something but you add something else you do more damage but you take more you take more damage stuff like that so i think that's cool if you get the dlc i didn't get the dlc i felt like i played everything there was to play with the time that i had with the game and it's a fucking ton of fun but just to be clear this is a 20 dollar game if you can get this on sale fucking brilliant but for 20 bucks definite guarantee fucking fun it is cool as shit and all the fights are pretty hard at first, but again, it's all about learning and mastering. And I think when it comes to games that are pure boss fights, that is why they're so fun because you have to master the game. All right, real quick, different shirt, different day, different lighting, because I started to ramble about Hi-Fi Rush, which does not qualify to be in this video because 40% of their levels do not have boss fights, whereas the rest of the games on this list have like 90 to 100 percent having said that i recommend all of them they're all amazing give one of them a try if you haven't already you're doing yourself a huge service by playing any one of these games moving on just want to let y'all know i still stream on fridays at 8 p.m central standard time which is 9 p.m eastern time the rest of the time zones in america i don't give a fuck about figure it out I'll see you guys there. On Thursdays, I typically leave polls. So have a little bell icon. You see that little bell icon? Smack that shit so you know when I post something. And uh, yeah, anyways, if you guys have enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, do all that other good stuff. Comment down below what you'd want to see more in terms of list or if you disagree with an opinion, I would love to hear that too. That's Or if you agree, let me know. Hey, yo, that game is badass. Bet, son. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.